Hallelujah. Well, we're going to do something um, pretty important to us. This is kind of like a family moment for, for those of you that are part of this body. Uh, but it's going to be a blessing to everybody, I assure you. And that being said, I want to invite Kirk and Tasha, if we can have their slide come up here. Um, this is a very, very dear couple. For those of you that are part of the body, um, you would have come to know them by now at some point. We love them. We appreciate and value them. They have truly poured out their heart and soul here. And um, I don't want to share. I want them to be able to take this moment to, to share things. I don't want to steal their thunder. This moment belongs to them. So I want to hand over. They've got a few things to do. And then uh, they'll get into some other things. But let's go ahead and just hear what they have to share. So right now, over to you, sir. So I uh, just want to update on the ministry, the shower and the love of Jesus. Uh, I'm sure we have a couple of new people here. Uh, that's going to be uh, a, a trailer, uh, a mobile trailer that's going to be able to shower homeless people in the community. Um, we are still in the fundraising stage, but I do want to update that we are official 501c3. Um, we have a logo, uh, Becca and Jordan, I don't know if they're here, Becca, they designed it, uh, it came out great, um, and then Mr. Danny, I hope you're watching, uh, we got you a cooking apron with the logo on it, uh, sad you couldn't be here, uh, and then, and we will be doing another event. We're going to do a pull boy event uh, in the next couple months, just trying to reschedule. I uh, was planning on doing it in July, but I don't want to do it right around Leon. Uh, so we'll just give you all more information coming up. Uh, pray that you all support again. Amen. I know you all will. Oh, Your turn. Is the video ready? Okay, so we have a video that we'd like you all to watch first. But you've got to get confident in this season. You've got to get bold in this season. You've got to push through all the stuff. Everybody, what is your name? Kurt, Kurt and? You married? Hold hands. I asked somebody to hold hands the other day. They, weren't even, they didn't even know each other. <laughs> God is going to show you, Kurt and Tasha, you're about to push through some things. You're about to push through some stuff, brother. The voices are going to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until you're not going to hear them anymore. But 2023 going into 2024 is going to be your year of testimony and breakthrough. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, you're going to see amazing stuff. You're going to see the most ridiculous things happen. You're going to look at him and say, how did this happen? This, is, this was not even on the map because it would look so ridiculous. And God says, I'm putting every dream, every desire, everything you've carried as a couple back on the table. And the doubt and the fear that started to rise up in you, Kurt, you're a mighty man of God. You're a mighty man. You're a great breadwinner. You're a provider. You're more than a conqueror. You're, you're, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. God says, I'm going to get your voice back. Because there was a season where you had a voice. But because of all the other voices, you lost your voice. And God says, I'm giving you your voice back. You can take that to the bank. So that was obviously Prophet David whenever he came back in November. Um, and around that same time, God really started positioning us for things. Uh, one of those things was we were presented with the opportunity to purchase our first rental property, which is something that we had a desire to, um, you know, have as a couple, you know, for extra income coming in. Um also around that same time, God was um, speaking to us about preparing a nursery in our home for a child. And most of y'all don't know our whole story, but Kirk and I have been trying to get pregnant for nine years. And we've gone through 
a lot medically. Um, with one doctor, we went through seven um, cycles of fertility medicine, two procedures, and then the doctor told me, I've exhausted all my options and I'll have to refer you to a specialist. So we saw that specialist. We did, thank you, another procedure and um, with more fertility drugs and that didn't work. That was back in 2020, uh, 2016. And at that point we were like, okay, this is, this is too much. This is not how we wanna go. So we gave up. And then in 2021, someone approached us and said, we feel that we want to pay for y'all to go through in vitro, which if some of y'all are not familiar, it's another procedure that basically it's a lot of infertility drugs just pumped into my body to produce as many eggs as possible. And then they go in and extract them. And then in a lab, they take Kirk's soldiers and put them with my eggs. And then at a separate time in my cycle would be placed back in me in hopes of implantation for pregnancy. So we did that twice, and both times they failed. Um, the specialist told us that if we ever wanted to have our own children, we only had two options. One option was to um, get a donor egg because my eggs, he determined, were not of good quality and would never produce a child for us. And then our other option was adoption. And that was not something, those two options were not anything that we felt we wanted to do. Um, that day was very devastating emotionally and mentally. I was tired, but I knew that that was not the end. That was not, my spirit was telling me, this is not over. But... In 2021, we just, once that all finished, we just stopped. And then in 2022, I walked into this place, and I was a broken mess. And I was just looking for more of Jesus because I knew that there was something missing inside of me. And I knew that what I was experiencing was not that there was more, and I needed more. And so I walked in just looking for hope. And that day, three women of this house spoke testimonies of how doctors told them that they should not and would not have children. And they all said, Doc, I respect your opinion, but I trust in the Lord. And all three women went on to have their own children again. And so I knew that that was not a coincidence that the Lord placed me here that day for those testimonies. And so once we became, you know, once we started coming here and just hearing the faith and the testimonies that everyone in this house had, our faith began to change and the Lord began to change us and our identity. And we just began to realize who we were and what he had for us and, and you know, the love that he had. He wasn't mad at us. He didn't, he's not angry with us. And that's the perception I had of God before I came here. And so as I changed, my faith changed on trying to have a child. And throughout that time, many of you, not knowing my story, gave me words from the Lord on how it was coming and it was coming. And I don't know, is Mr. Dwayne here? Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. No, you don't have to. Cause I think he's on, on the TV. Okay. Um, one Thursday night sometime last year, Mr. Dwayne came to me after service and he was like, I have this scripture from the Lord. And I don't know if you knew, but I, it was cute. Um, and it was Psalm 113 verse nine. And it says, um, I will give a barren woman a home and make her joyous mother of children. And I held on to that scripture very tightly and I just spoke it often. And uh, even, you know, each month and that cycle came, it was still devastating, but I just held on. And so we would like to share with you all now that we are pregnant.
And so over that time, I know I mentioned the baby room. We did in January set up the baby room in faith, a nursery in faith. Um, in 2022, God also gave me a name for the baby. And I kind of, you know, put it behind my mind because it's like, I, I don't want to hear that if, you know. Um, his name is Judah. <laughs> yes. Um, also, over the last few weeks of reflecting on everything, God brought me back to that scripture Mr. Dwayne gave me. And the scripture says, I will give you a home. I will give the barren woman a home and make her a joyous mother of children. And he broke it down and he said that that was my steps. He had to give me a home. And I don't believe that that home is where we live, but that home is this house. We needed that family of faith to push through this time. And then the next step was to make me joyous. And through the time, of the last year and a half being here, he's cleansed me from the depression and the anger and, you know, control and fear. And he made me joyous before he brought me to the breakthrough. Yeah. Um, so there, I would love for Paul to come and share his part of this testimony. <laughs> Guys, this is extraordinary. Take a listen to this. So first off and say, Everyone here is so amazing that everything here that happens in these doors, not only is the Lord, but it's because everyone here is so loving and welcoming. Um, I'm honored that they asked me to come up here and share it. I don't want to diminish from them and from the Lord because I'm just a tiny, tiny piece that he chose to use. But, um, you know, I love everyone here, and the Lord just gave me the opportunity to meet them and love them probably a few months after I started coming here, I'd sit by them on Thursday nights, and I just loved them so much, and I wanted so badly <sighs> for them to have the desires of their heart. And, and a few times throughout this whole thing, the Lord would just randomly, they'd be on my heart like in worship and all that, and the Lord would show me something for them or tell me something for them. And I'd be like, Lord, I don't want to give them hope. If it's going to be a while, I don't want to, you know, he gives hope and all that, but I didn't want to build him up for them to be devastated again. But, you know, he has a process. He obviously knows better. But one Thursday night, they were sitting over there. I was sitting over here, and I saw Tasha holding her baby. And I saw Kurt looking over her shoulder and just staring with such love and admiration and just pure just what I imagine God looks at us with, I saw them too in that, you know, it's the quintessential picture of a father and a mother in the hospital room. And so it's just in this burning desire. And the Lord told me, he said, this is my desire for them. And he said, tell them. So obediently I told him. And um, I wish I'd have written the date down, but I didn't. I think it was January or beginning of February, but I was just you know, spending some time with the Lord in my house in the quiet. And just as we were, just as we're talking or like, you know, like this, he told me, he said that Tasha was going to get pregnant in March. He said they were going to find out in April. They were going to tell their family in May. And in December, she was going to have the baby. And so I said, okay, Lord, you know, it's amazing. And I was like, I don't know what to do with this because I can't go and tell them because, if I'm wrong, you know, because I, I, I was cautious, <laughs> you know, I was cautious because when you want something so bad, sometimes your judgment can get clouded. So I said, Lord, I need to sit on this and, and, you know, make sure because I was not confident in myself. I'm confident in him, but not in myself to say, say these things to them and then be wrong because then it's on me and not the Lord if, he, if it wasn't him. So... I just sat on her for a while, and I don't remember if it was the end of February, beginning of March. I, I felt like I could tell Tasha that I couldn't tell her the dates and all that, everything I'd heard. But I said, all these things you've been through, you know, it, it's, I think it was to prepare, something like to prepare you. But it said it's going to look like it's going to pass this year and not going to happen. But before the end of the year, it will happen. It will happen. And so I felt like that's all I could tell her. But I was bursting inside, like I could not contain this. So I told two sets of people 
I told Derek and Molly I went out at their house because I couldn't. Like, I was bursting at the seams like a kid. Like a kid who, who found out his Christmas present but, but wasn't supposed to know. And I told E.C. and Sarah one night because um, the Lord does nothing without a witness. And so I wanted it to testify and glorify him that if he told me this, that others knew so it could show how good he is and how amazing he is. And so, uh, what was it, Cinco de Mayo? Yeah. We went. I was. Ha- I, it's been up and down. It's not about me, but just a tiny, tiny bit. It's been up and down about all kind of stuff in my life and everything. And so these people are so amazing. We went to some Mexican restaurant for Cinco de Mayo. And Derek and Molly were there again, too. And um, they told me about them being pregnant. And it just, I mean, it boosted me. It was like, like you say, a, a, a shot of Holy Spirit, just faith of love, of building up. Like in an instant when Peter... When Jesus says, throw your net over here, and he said, we've been at it all night, Lord. And he says, just cast your net there. And he do, and the fish is abundant, and it just turns everything around. That's what it was like for me. I mean, it just it, it took me from the ground to the, to the atmosphere. And, it, and it, it gave me confirmation, and it gave me faith and hope that what I heard was correct. And, that, and God kind of told me that when, you, when it's compassion and it's earnest, true love, he will share secrets with you for the, uh, for the ones you love and the ones he, he loves. So it's the December, th- what's your due date, the 30th? It's the 29th. She's going to have the baby. The Lord told me. <laughs> and he even told me, he even told me because the end of April was coming to pass. And I'm like, Lord, not that they have to tell me, but I'm like, I figured that would have been some kind of a sign or something. <laughs> and they told me. I think it was the 25th you said it was you found out. And on that day, I asked the Lord that question. And I feel like he told me it's today. So I'm, I'm just a, a willing, honored to be used or co-labored. I changed that word. I don't use use anymore. I co-labor with him because use isn't a bad connotation. So we co-labor together. And I'm just honored to be co-laboring with the Lord for his glory and his honor and for loving these two amazing people. And so just to confirm what the Lord told Paul, that's exactly how it happened. We, um, what was it? (laughs) Ask Paul, he knows the dates. (laughs) Anyway, we found out in April. um, We told our family in May. And then based on my, you know, the doctor science stuff, my due date. <clears throat> is 12:30 but I was sitting with the Lord looking at my calendar one day and I was just like Lord I would love to know like what day it happened you know and um so I feel like the day he highlighted to me um so I went on Google and I googled conception date to due date and the due date based on my actual conception date is the 29th so the Lord is so good Hallelujah. and faithful we we're so happy Thank, thank you all for thank you, Jesus. listening to our let's, story let's, and come on. rejoicing with us. And let me just tell you, uh, we love this family so, so much. Um, when <laughs> when they came and told me for the very first time, the wall was still up there, we were, and that was the kids' ministry. By the way, for those of you that don't know, we're in the middle of renovation still. We're a work in progress. And I just wept like a baby. So let me just tell you, whatever it is that you're believing the Lord for, nothing is impossible. And they are a walking miracle. And um, honestly, you know, to see this miracle manifest with them is kind of like, I couldn't, I, I want miracles for everybody, but to know the condition of their hearts and what they've had to war with to where they are right now is absolutely amazing. And so um, just, we want to pray with you. Let's extend our hands towards them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for Kirk and Tasha, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are a good, 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 good heavenly father. 
Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have turned every bit of mourning into joy. Lord, that they are experiencing you even as you have brought them in the season of restoration. Lord, that you brought them to a home and really it is a home a home with a family, a one big family that love each other, Lord, and we celebrate them, we honor them, we receive them. We thank you, Father, for the destiny and purpose of God upon their lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. We thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you, Father, for everything that you are going to use them to do and this beautiful baby boy Judah father and so father as a family a body of believers here Lord Jesus Lord Lord we thank you for your anointing that that is upon this pregnancy we thank you father that this is going to be a supernatural childbirth and we thank you father we declare that Judah not only means praise but father I thank you that there will be the, the there will be the shout of praise, the evidence of the goodness of God that you're going to use this little boy to yes. that is anointed and separated for your plans and purposes to be a mighty instrument, Father. Yes. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, and we declare for them as a household, Lord, that there are many more blessings in store for them yes. in Jesus' name, Father, that if you've done it once, you're going to be able to do it again in Jesus' name. We speak Jesus. life, Father, we thank you for the showering the love of Jesus ministry. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that supernaturally, even before this year's end, Father, we might as well just believe you for it all, that every bit of every budget will be met, Father, that they can start launching out with that ministry, Lord Jesus, to, to help in the homeless community with showering people, Father, and sharing the love of Jesus with them and showering the love of Jesus, literally, Father, in Jesus' name. We speak life and blessing. In Jesus' name, and Kirk and Tasha, as a body, destiny family, we tell you, we love you, and the Lord loves you, and the angels love you, and the, and the Lord loves his child, and it is just so awesome. So we rejoice and we celebrate with you right now, in Thank Jesus' you, name. Father, every part, organ, and tissue will form and operate correctly, Lord God, that you have a supernatural pregnancy, Lord God. No more ab any symptoms, Lord God, that will cause her distress, but peace that passes all understanding, strength in Jesus' name, that her, even her pregnancy will be a testimony of your goodness, Hallelujah. of your grace, of your mercy, in Jesus' name. Life, life, life Hallelujah. everlasting, and an amazing supernatural childbirth, Lord God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And by the way, you can take a look at everybody. She is glowing. Amen. Praise God. Well, you may be seated. <sighs> Hallelujah. Um, how many of you feel like that was important to hear? I mean, I'm just so blown away at the goodness of God.